Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Understanding is the key to right principles and attitudes, and right action is the key to good living. Therefore, the joy of good living is the theme of A's 12 Steps. Which, with each passing day of our lives, may every one of us sense more deeply the inner meaning of AA's simple prayer. And then they've got the serenity prayer. And then, you know, in step 12, on page 109, and this fit me so good, it, it, meant, it, it still means a lot to me. And it's on page 109. It says, so practicing these steps, we had a spiritual awakening about which we finally, which finally there was no question. Looking at those who were only beginning and still doubted themselves, the rest of us were able to see a change set again. From great numbers of such experiences, we could predict that the doubter who still claimed that he hadn't got the spiritual angle and who still considered his well-loved AA group the higher power would presently love God and call him by name. That's in print. Now, you imagine that. Do you, know, you think, when I read, when I first came to earth, I read something like that, I'd have run like a deer. To think that I would even begin to even talk the way I talk today. To think that when I come here, that I had nothing going for me but me, and I wanted nothing else but me, and then to turn around through a process of application of 12 steps for a way of life that kept me going, that kept me doing things I didn't want to do and thought I couldn't do sometimes or didn't need to do, and yet the, I kept trying, and I failed. I hurt people. I hurt, I hurt people close to me. And then I tried my best to learn to correct, to do things differently. And all of a sudden, they were different. All of a sudden, I wasn't acting and behaving with such vengeance, such power. It was slowly going, but it was going by application. And I didn't know that I could have this whole way of living life today, provided I would do today what I'm supposed to do today. And that's no more than I've been talking about all day. It was living and building a character as I lived the character in the day I'm in. Living it means applying it, means that I will right now do what I'm supposed to do for my life so that the disease will be treated right now. And that means right now. This here is something now special about step 12. You know, before we get into the questions, I, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, we took a collection at the door. And so laying this out today for anybody that hasn't paid in it, if you pass the hat or something, would you pay? Uh, to help us pay for the things that are, and uh, uh, let's see, and, and also anybody that hasn't, we're making tapes, you know, and the tapes are sold at cost, exactly what they cost. There's, and Waller's the one that does it over there. He he can tell you. Uh, if you want, if you want, this is this whole day on tape or on video, uh, Randy's video in it. There's a list out there that if you haven't signed it, would you put your name and your phone number on, and maybe we could call you or something like that when when Walter gets them all done. And uh, the same as the videos, I don't know what they cost, uh, but I know that I know that the, the uh, tapes don't cost very much. There probably would be at least four cassettes, Walter. How much would that be? A price? See, about six dollars for the set of tapes. And uh, maybe somebody else, uh, you, you might have maybe you found out something here, enjoyed something, maybe you wanted. Uh, give somebody something for a gift or something like that, or somebody, maybe somebody new is struggling. What the heck? Uh, that's the purpose of the tapes. Uh, the videos, I have no idea what that costs. I don't know if Randy would even tell me, you or Charlie, but we, it's there to have. He's going to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me tell you a person about Jim Finn's memorial. I, you guys maybe, the ones maybe don't know, maybe you do. There's, tomorrow's a memorial for Jim Finn. It's out in Silmar. Uh, there's some flyers out there. Or ask me later and I'll tell you about it, where it's at. And uh, if, uh, if there is a, if there is any, uh, is it, you got a basket or anything you can pass around just to see? Uh, we got expenses here. I mean, they're expenses too. Believe me, they cost some money. Uh, and, and so we're we're trying to make sure that everything is all right. 
You know, we got a list out there also uh, so that your name and address and phone number will be used just to let you know if there's any more uh, workshops or retreats or anything else if you would like to know about it. Maybe not, maybe so. Uh, then let's we'll see. Uh, we go into questions if you want now, too. This part about the evil power, I do think there is such a thing as that. And the reason I, I've always thought that, even before I knew God, the reason why is because I did so many things when I was out in that world alone. I really did a lot of things. I did a lot of damage. I lived a life that was a dirty life, a hard life. And how I got that way, I certainly wasn't born that way. And how I got that way, I got that way by the inner world I was in, doing the things that I shouldn't do, but I was having fun. And that meant exactly that. There must be some kind of a power that keeps me, a people like Alkies like me anyway, from performing the way they perform. Because others around me that I used to drink with, they used to get just as drunk as I did, almost as drunk. They didn't behave the way I behaved. They just didn't do it. There's got to be something, you know, that my brain, maybe, maybe, I, I don't see, alcoholism to me doesn't come in degrees. Alcoholism is a disease of the mind that it doesn't make no difference. It's a disease. It isn't, it doesn't come in quantity. It doesn't, it just doesn't come that way. And so this here, as far as the question of the, of the dark side, I believe there is a dark side. I don't want to name it because I don't talk that way and I don't think that way. I, maybe it's a devil, I don't know. But I do know that there is a way to live that you shouldn't live because it's really a dirty way. You know, meditation is, is a, is actually a quiet time. It's a, it's a, to me. The only thing different I'll say about meditation is that I've, in the beginning I've heard a great deal in AA, and I'm not disagreeing with nobody or no, no nothing, I'm not. But what I am saying, I had to learn that I had to learn to meditate more than just when I wake up. I had to learn that meditation has to be in the day I live as I live my life today. There's no reason why I can't meditate anywhere I'm at. I don't care where I'm at. There's no reason I can't shut down. There's no reason. I used to be out on the freeway, and I and I bring in these big these big bobtails and that. I fix them. They won't run. They break down on the freeway. They're parked in the fast lane or someplace like that. And I'm out there and I'm running scared. I'm thinking I'm going to get killed and everything else like that. Traffic's going by 90 miles an hour, and I'm getting all wrapped up in my head. You know, my head's telling me so much. I'm getting so blind. I can't see what's wrong with the truck. And so what I had to do, I had to learn. I go back to my truck. Then I sit down, and I get quiet. And when I get quiet, I'm thinking thoughts only of the good life. I'm thinking only of thoughts right now. I'm not thinking of the, ra the rat race, the freeway, the troubles. I'm not thinking about getting killed or any of these other things like that. I'm shutting down. All of a sudden, I got some strength, inner strength. All of a sudden, I'm quiet inside. I'm calm. I go back to the truck. Maybe I was there only five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it was. I go back to the truck. Sometimes I can see immediately what's wrong that I couldn't see before. Sometimes I have to hook up and drag them in. But you see, the thing there was is that I did shut down. I did stop me from talking to me, telling me. I stopped looking at things out there in the world that were very disturbing. Meditation. I don't think it comes in time. I'm not arguing against anybody. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying this, I'm saying there's no reason why any one of us, at least for me, that when I'm in the day I'm in, why can't I meditate with God? Why can't I get quiet? Why can't I be receptive to his will, his power, his strength, his words, his guidance? Why can't I? I can. You see, this makes it a little bit different. This is not prayer. This is actually shutting down. This is actually turning my mind off the way my mind thinks and acts and sees because I have, I have to do something but I don't know what to do. When I do this, it becomes very apparent to me what I have to do. Sometimes I go back there and I fix the truck in a second. Something I didn't see before, I see now. And the way he goes and the way I go, and man, we, we're, we're off again. You see, before I'd get in such a stew, and I'd get so angry, and I'd get so shook up that I wouldn't even know what I'm doing. And this means exactly the same thing at any part of my life. I don't care where it's at. Anywhere I go, any time at all, if I can stop, in a, in a market, in a, in, a, in a parking lot, anywhere, why can't I meditate there? Why do I have to wait in the morning and do it for a half an hour? Why do I have to spend a half an hour in the morning talking to a crazy person? That's the way I do things. I get up in the morning, I think all I have to do now is just sit there, and then everything's going to come to me. 
It, I don't. I don't function that way. I just don't. This. I'm, I'm telling you again. This is what I do. I'm not telling you to do this. Believe me, I'm not. But meditation, I think, has to be looked at as quiet time. I think it has to be looked at as something that I can empty me of me by not using me and talking to me and thinking with me about me and my problems, my day. All of a sudden, man, I'm, I can even fall asleep meditating <laughs> because the rat race is off. It is. It's actually off. In prayer, you know, I had to learn. I didn't say much about it, but also we, I think I should talk about prayer because of 11. Step 11. And I had to learn about prayer, what prayer is. Now, this is only me. Is that I had to learn that prayer is two parts to prayer. Now, two parts to prayer means first is the communion or the petition to God. This is, this is the idea now of turning my will of my life over to his care and then drawing from that. Now, the second part of the prayer, though, is what I call important because that's the part that I have to fulfill. The second part of the prayer is that I have to live now according to that prayer. So the day I'm in, whatever it is, I'm I'm actually living by that prayer. Now, what I mean by that, if I ask God, like I asked him one time to help me with my hostility and anger, that was in the beginning. The minute I went ahead and I started that living that day, at that time when I asked for help, and I started doing something now I never did before. I kept talking to this power about my hostility and anger, and by talking to God in prayer, this was in mental prayer with God as I worked, as I walked in the shop and everything else like that, I wasn't talking to me. I was talking to a power greater than me, which another man called God. And as I did this, I was performing that day by not being angry and hostile because I was talking to something other than me. When I talk to me, me tells me to get angry and I get angry. It's as simple as that. I was building a relationship with a power that's greater than me. At first, it started out just a small little bit, talking to it. Next, it was asking. Next, was petitioning. Next, was performing in the day I'm in, according to that prayer. Whatever that prayer was, it was about a car. Maybe I need a car. Maybe I need a house, a place to sleep. Maybe I need some money, a food, whatever it is. Why can't I talk to God about that and then go in the day I'm in, doing exactly that? You know, things come to me. I don't know if they come to you. They'll come to me. When I talk to God, I lack something. I need something. All of a sudden, my eyes are looking in the right direction. My mind is looking in the right direction. I start to see something I couldn't see before. I see maybe somebody's got a car next to me. Maybe I talk to you and you've got a woman sitting in your yard you, you, you haven't used and you don't want it. Next thing you know, i got transportation. It happens to me all the time. I was dead broke in 83. Lost every damn dime I had. They stripped me clean. And so, you know, and, I, and all I had was I have a, a van with tools in it. One day, when I was like that, I couldn't go see my kids because they lived down in Orange County because I can't drive that iron down there that far. All of a sudden, some gal come up there. She said to me, your name Bob Anderson? I said, yeah. She says, she says, I have a car here. It's a Cadillac. She says, it runs on propane. I used to do propane work. And she says, you know, she says, nobody can make this car run. If you make this car run, I'll give you a car. It's parked in front of my house. It's been there for a year. and was born to my husband, and he died. I tuned the thing up, made it run right, and she gave me that car, and I got transportation, just like that. All happened, bang, just like that. Do you think for one minute I had anything to do with that? No way. But you see, to be receptive to this, to look at this world the way I should look at it, instead of a rotten world, a world full of anguish and full of all kinds of crap, I don't need to do that. When I do that, I'm blind. I'm blind as a bat. I told you before, I'm blind. I can't see well. I don't need glasses on hearing it. I might today, but not back then. <laughs> I'm talking about the disease of alcoholism, how it controls me, how it tells me things that aren't true. It makes me act and behave in a way I don't even want to act and behave. That's because of the disease. What is, what is spiritual growth? Please identify spiritual growth, the demonstration of spiritual growth. You know, this the spiritual growth is what we've been talking about now since step 11. Spiritual growth is exactly what I say it is as far as the day I'm in, that I have to grow spiritually because the obligations on me is more today than it was yesterday. There's more things to do. There's more things to see. There's more behavior that God wants me to do. And if I don't grow spiritually, 
Then I'll have to stay in yesterday's life, yesterday's performance, yesterday's prayers even. Because spiritual growth comes only from the application of steps. That's why step 11, I said, is the only step you can grow spiritually. Because what you do, sought through prayer and meditation to improve your conscious contact. You're improving your relationship with God by conscious contact. You grow spiritually. Your life changes. Things are there that weren't there before. They get better. Things look, things look now a whole lot different than they did yesterday. I don't know if you look at life that way, but start, for me, I have to count my blessings. I have to look at each day and, and actually praise God for today's life today because it is my life today and it's a good day. This is growing spiritually. What I have to do in the day I'm in is already there to do. It's always there. I can do it. The thought comes. The, the opportunity comes. The people come. Everything comes to me. And then I perform. The reason I perform is because I can do this. It's no job. It's not too hard to work. It's not something I don't want to do. It's something I do want to do. And I do it. But, and if somebody cheats you, I understand you to say that you shouldn't make, that, that shouldn't make me angry. Please explain. You know, being cheated and being angry and all them things like that, first thing i got to find out is what we're talking about here in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm talking about a mind that's hurt. I'm talking about a mind that produces an unmanageable life. I'm talking about the way my mind functions, the way it sees things. To be cheated out of something or something like that, maybe it's true, maybe it isn't true. But you see, the idea behind this is every time I get anger, it controls me, it hurts me, it disturbs my life. I hurt people. I get results that I don't want these results, but I get them anyway. I don't know the difference that I can be concerned about something. I can be somebody today. The anger does not come in as anger to control me. It just don't. There's a lot of things that happen in this world that I, I it's hard to accept sometimes. But it's not up to me to say that I should treat you differently because you acted differently or did something to me that I don't like and don't approve. This is always the same thing. We're talking about the character that I am. We're talking about how I live in the day I'm in. Well, you know, <laughs> that's the same as me when I first got here. I got here in, a, in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm sober, and, I, and I'm picking up Alkies. I had many, many babies in them days because there was, there was only five meetings in the whole valley, and there was no place to go. No, there, was, there wasn't much literature around. There wasn't much of anything. The big book and this came out, yeah. But there wasn't much of anything. And I did carry a lot of Alkies to meetings. So it all depends what you call help. It all depends. Maybe just a phone call. Maybe somebody sharing some trouble with you. Anything like this. Anything could be of help. But to carry this message, like in 12 Step, no, I don't think so. I think in terms that I must have a message to carry, sharing some trouble with you. Anything like this. Anything could be of help. But to carry this message, like in 12 Step, no, I don't think so. I think in terms that I must have a message to carry. And when you, when you hear at meetings and the vision for you on page 164 in your big book, and it says you obviously can't transmit something you don't have. So you see, this is what this is about. Certainly I can be help somebody at any time. It doesn't make no difference. But the point of what I'm talking about is to carry this message, this 12 step says, to alcoholics. I have to have this message to carry it. How could I carry this message if I don't even know it? I don't live by that. I don't do that. Sure, I can help alcoholics. You bet I can. I used to put them in hotels and pay their bills and everything else. Buy them gas, give them money, sure. But this is talking about something else. This says this message, this message to alcoholics. You know, that's in your, you know, that one's in your book here. And it really has to be in there, too, because I would have a hard time answering that if it wasn't in the book because of what it says. And that means exactly that. Was a guy with his wife, remember, he'd be put in jail and and if he, uh, it says in there that I'm going to have to respond to that to what I think is the best to do at that time. And you know, this means exactly that, is that to pay somebody back and you don't have the money to pay them back. I don't know how you'd ever do that, you know. <laughs> as long as I'm willing to do it, though, that, that's one of the things, huh? Let's see, you know, I work with other well, you know, this, again, is the same thing, the character building. To live by spiritual principles in all your affairs means that work, too. You have to build a character so that this character, 
is living the life now that is by principle, see? So to be in business, I've been in business a long time in, in NAA and everything like that. And it means exactly this, that the, the, the way, the principle of my life is I live my life. I don't cheat you. And I have success. My business is good. I make money. And I don't take advantage of you, whoever you are. When you come in, I don't, I don't tag your, I don't tag parts on your car that I didn't put in there. I know how to do all that stuff. I don't do that. The business living in Alcoholics Anonymous with a new character allows me to be in the day I'm in, depending on God. God is going to supply and give me everything that I need that day, regardless of what it is. This means that I have to trust God. That means that in business, I have a better business. I'm a better man. I'm a better businessman. I can go anywhere, and I can look you in the eye and tell you I'm an honest man. You see, I never could do none of these things before, and this is true. But you see, it helps me in all of my affairs. But the character building has to be first. The character building has to be a way of life. It has to be in the day I'm in, so I don't go back to self. I don't all of a sudden start cheating again or something like that. Everything about this is a guarantee for every one of us. You know, this here, what we're talking about now, you know, I didn't read it, and it should be read, it should be identified, and it just now come up to my mind about it, is that it talks in here, and it says in here, it talks, but it is from our twisted relations with family, friends, and society at large that many of us have suffered the most. We have been especially stupid and stubborn about them. The primary fact that we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. Now, that means exactly business-wise, friendship, anything at all, marriages, girlfriends, boyfriends, anything at all. It doesn't make no difference what it is. That I have the total inability to form a true partnership with another, another human being, a person. Whether you're a customer of mine, when I'm working on your iron or anything else like that, makes no difference. You see, I have to be the man I say I am. And then I can be that man through the program recovery because the character that I'm living with now is this character right here. I'm living this life by applying it. 53. And you read on, on 52, at the bottom of 52 is where it starts. 53 is where it says that. Yeah, that's, that's the one you're going to learn. That's 12 by 12. 12 by 12. That's the 12th step. Well, that's, that's what you have to know, I think, is what book. All right, that's it. So... That's about it. Now we got five minutes. Close. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's close with a large prayer. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.